Thank you, Ron. Uh, thank you, Ron. Thanks, yeah. Okay, so uh, as the title suggests, uh, uh, my talk would be on this probabilistic conformal blocks and their semi classical limit. Um, so this would be based on uh, two joint works, like one with uh, Guillaume Remy, uh, Jin San, and Lee San. Guillaume and Jin uh, are present in um, IAS, um, he is from Chicago. Uh, and the second one was uh, with uh, uh, Harini Desiraju and Andre Prokhorov. Um, so Harini is in uh, uh, Sydney, Australia, and Andre is in University of Michigan. So uh, let me just start flesh out a little bit about this uh, outline of the talk. So I'll say a bit on this. Uh, so basically, the talk would be focused on the conformal blocks of little conformal field theory. So I'll say a bit on this background of liberal theory. And then uh, I'll set the goal for the talk. And we'll go into then this construction of this probabilistic conformal block. What do we mean by that? So uh, the main result regarding this conformal block that I'm going to present is this uh, convergence of the conformal block, convergence properties. Is that this is something not known for a long time. And there is another thing, which is this geological conjecture, which is about this uh, semi-classical limit of the conformal block and how we solve it. And uh, depending on how much time we've got, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit uh, on this proof ideas of all these uh, main results that we have. Okay, so we'll start with this um, um, background on this uh, label theory. So label uh, conformal field theory were there, was there for a long time, and it uh, uh, took this modern form uh, because of the work of uh, several people. But maybe, like uh, possibly, uh, it's uh, originated from like uh, this uh, uh, seminal work of Polyakov in 1981. So there, uh, so I, I took an excerpt from like the first page of the paper. So uh, I was looking at it and trying to sort of understand the motivation behind uh, like postulating this uh, liberal theory. So uh, the uh, goal was to sort of like understand how to do, uh, how to develop our integration theory over random surface or uh, integration of, of a random map defined on two dimensional uh, Riemannian surface. So, uh, and what do you mean by this integration theory? So, uh, so there would be a Liouville uh, field, which would be something a function of uh, distribution valued object. I want to get a quantization of this Liouville field. Uh, in probabilistic sense, it's equivalent to taking some sort of expectation. And, uh, uh, but then there's like some, uh, non-triviality in uh, taking this expectation. So uh, at least in the way it was postulated, then uh, one has to take uh, integration of um, this uh, f of phi uh, integrated with respect to some exponential of some action. And uh, it has to be integrated over like uh, this uh, set of all distribution valued object. But then underlying measure is uh, some sort of, has to be some sort of like a uniform measure over the all such distribution valued objects. So that was like something uh, not much like sort of uh, well understood at that time. And as time progresses, there are some like a uh, lot of developments around this, like how to make sense of this uniform measure. We'll talk about a little bit all, all these uh, uh, approaches. Um, so here, one thing to note, which sort of like uh, make this label uh, field, uh, label theory uh, special is this, this form of this label action. So this is like this integral of this uh, delta phi square plus exponential of this a gamma uh, times phi z. And uh, so this gamma is sort of this, uh, this fundamental parameter of the theory. And for this throughout my talk, this gamma would be varying in the interval zero to two. Now, uh, so that was this previous thing that I said was like a fast integral approach towards uh, liberal theory. There is a parallel approach uh, uh, based on like this representation theory of Rosser algebra. And uh, in the year uh, 1984, Belavin Polyakov-Geologica, they introduced this conformal bootstrap program where basically what they're trying to sort of say that these two approach are equivalent. So this is a way, one way to sort of combine these two things. But it was not rigorously proved until just two years ago. That was a breakthrough 
work by uh, Guillermo uh, uh, Rhodes and Vargas. So I'm going to go towards like some description tours that um, sort of break the result. Uh, but then uh, I should mention that uh, this uh, whole thing been developed over like based on like works which is going on for 20 years. And I had to skip like a lot of these things because uh, I cannot fit all this in one slide. And I apologize for those who are like uh, 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 whose works I'm missing here. Uh, so uh, towards proving this conformal bootstrap program, the first sort of like uh, major progress happened in this. Uh, and so this conformal bootstrap program, like I was mentioning in two years ago, was based on like this probabilistic techniques. And the first ma major progress towards uh, like proving this uh, happened in 2016. And uh, it was done by David Koppen and uh, Rhodes and Fargus. Uh, so what they did is that they sort of rigorously make sense of this path in approach. And on, in their program of, of doing so, there are two components which turns out to be very crucial. Uh, one of them is this Gaussian free field. I'm gonna talk about a little bit about that in the next slide. And uh, another thing is Gaussian multiplicative chaos measure. So it's a random measure. And the way to sort of like uh, think about it is like, it's a, a measure which is probably like the absolute continuous with respect to this uh, volume, un underlying volume measure of the Riemannian surface. And the radon nicotine derivative uh, uh, is, uh, would be formally, you can think of it as the exponential of this Gaussian free field. So the next, Major progress happened in the next year, 2017, where uh, the Scopani, Rhodes, and Burgess were able to sort of uh, find out this fun fundamental structural constant of this new CFT. And this was proposed, uh, uh, like, uh, this was like figured out actually on the phys and by the physicist uh, long ago, but at least from the mathematical side using probabilistic idea, this was the first time when it was proved. And then this 2020, uh, the uh, Guillermo Kupen and Rosenbergers finally proved this conform bootstrap program and uh, for the uh, like the Riemann sphere and later generalize it for like uh, uh, any genus uh, uh, using like uh, this uh, very fine this Siegel's action for CFT. Now our focus would be on torus and I'll talk about that, but uh, before sort of like. Uh, actually fleshing out the goal of the talk, let me just uh, tell briefly how, about like how this level CFT would look like on tours. So the objects that I mentioned are this two, basically two things, this Gaussian free field and um, uh, this Gaussian multiplicative chaos measure. Now the Gaussian free field is not a very complicated, thing, although it's like a bit complicated. So it's uh, just like you can think of it as a like uh, infinite series. Or like in series, series expansion, which has some basis, where the coefficients would be some Gaussian independent Gaussian random variable. But the series actually like uh, it's not convergent, so it's a, that's why it's a distribution valued object. And the Gaussian multiplicative chaos measure has to be like as I said formally, it's like exponential of this object. But since the series is not convergent, you need to go through like some renormalization procedure. So uh, that's that's what I try to write down here, like some sort of renormalization and taking limit of that. And finally, using uh, this Gaussian multiplicative chaos measure, the uh, the one way to sort of like uh, 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 define this uh, expectation of this quantization or expectation of like f of phi for some uh, uh, functional from like this distribution valued object to the R is like this uh, particular uh, integral formula that I wrote. Now this things, uh, if you haven't seen it, you don't have to sort of remember it. it won't, like this particular form never show up in a reference like that. But then uh, what exactly what we would be talking about, so this is the thing. So as I, like, as my title of my talk has this control block, so we get into, we had to go to comment in the previous slide that you have to work with realization using tau and they take a limit as tau goes somewhere and uh, no tau is fixed 
that was all right. that was uh, <laughs> taking a, uh, it's a complex number uh, taking a kind of values now. So for any tau, you have a Gaussian free field then. Yes. And uh, but they're all the same distribution or different distribution. Different distribution. So there are several Gaussian free fields. So for a given tau, a discussion free field uh, characterized by this uh, covariance function. And the covariance function would be the Green's function of the torus, this complex torus with the modular So these that. are different tori somehow? Exactly. How could you exactly. something about exactly. the torus? Okay. okay, so then where is the control block? So the control block comes to, like at least in our work, comes through this bootstrap formula that was proposed by the and Paul about John Lutzikoff. So on the left hand side, this is a like simplest possible bootstrap formula for this one point functional on the torus. On the left hand side, this object, as I said, uh, was like now rigorously defined through this formalism of uh, uh, and Roach and Vargas. And the right hand side is coming from this algebraic approach, and it's an integral of some objects. And this object, uh, this integral of some integrand, and this integrand has mainly two components. The first one is this, uh, this, this C that you see here, this constant. And the C is the structural constant, and it's given by this DOZZ formula that I was mentioning. So now, like with this probabilistic idea, one has like proven, like uh, the uh, Bernie Rhodes and Vargas proven, like this, uh, the exact for like sort of expression of this, which is given in terms of double gamma ratio of double gamma function. And this mysterious object is this like this H that I wrote here. This is uh, what's supposed to be the conformal block in this new conformal field theory. And there is this Q and Q is related to this modular parameter of torus uh, uh, where we are doing this theory. Uh, Q is equal to power I by tau. And this, there is this capital Q, which is related to this fundamental parameter of my legal theory. And uh, this is like uh, uh, Q, capital Q is gamma over two plus two over gamma. Now, uh, this is sort of the bootstrap formula, but then uh, our goal is to- so, so can we go back to that? I think, I think it's a little mysterious, of course. I, mean, uh, even, I know a little bit about this, but it's still. So this, this C is really the three point function. Yes. For for the sphere for the sphere right and and so you're going you're trying to get into, you have information about the three point function on the sphere and you're trying to get the one point function on the torus is that correct exactly exactly that's correct so this is uh, kind of like uh, putting all this theory so, so the is this a kind of way of you want to go from the, the, the sphere to the or the sphere of the torus or are you doing some kind of gluing or yeah I'm going okay. to do that. Yeah, like uh, although uh, I won't be focusing too much on that, but I'll kind of play a little bit. Uh, okay, so let me just uh, say uh, so we want to understand this uh, this conformal block using probabilistic method, and uh, if possible, to study the semi classical limit. By semi classical limit, I mean this taking this logarithm of the conformal block, scaling it by gamma square gamma being the fundamental parameter and letting this gamma go to zero. And there is some like conjecture uh, 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 like uh, recorded by Jim uh about this uh, limit. Uh, so we can sort of like uh, state that conjecture and then um, we'll try to uh, show how we can prove that. So uh, another question, I mean, do we know that the H alpha, uh, these, these uh, formal blocks mm -hmm. exist from, from the work of, of uh, uh, Kupian and Vargas and Rhodes, we know it exists. And we it, know and, it and exists. It's well, and it's well defined. It's well defined, yes, okay. yes. But then it's an infinite series. Now, the problem with uh, that infinite series is that, like, if you want to study such a limit of this kind, yeah. it's very, like, it's kind of like uh, giving not much information to that. And the other general question is as I said, I don't know that much about this thing. So is it, can it be well defined? In, can it be defined purely in terms of the Dirac-Silva representation? Could exactly. Yeah. That's how it's defined, like an okay. algebraic approach. Yeah, I'll review. Say something about that, or that. Yeah, I'll review some of the things. 
Okay, so this is the thing that I wanted to say that conformal block. Uh, so I showed you like one sort of instance how it appears, but conformal block actually sort of appears in many different contexts. Uh, and sometimes people know it by different names. Uh, and but in the liberal conformal field theory, the way you can sort of view it is that it's sort of a glue in the sense that suppose you have two like surface and you have like two theory defined on the surface. So it's a way of glue, it's a glue which sort of like allows you to sort of like glue this two theory defined on this two different surface and make a consistent theory on this glued surface. I mean, very high level, of course, there are a lot of algebra, algebraic and uh, analytic details in it, but I'll not go to all of this. But what I wanted to find out with, through this connection is that possibly what's going on here is that uh, like in this different context, uh, like it's kind of remind, remind you that story of this elephant and four blind men, where the blind men were like trying to sort of like uh, hold uh, some part of the elephant and trying to sort of say that that is how the elephant would look like, but probably there is an underlying universal picture. And what our work would try to do is that we'll under understand more of this universal picture. Uh, okay, so now I'll go towards like this constructing this conformal block using probabilistic approach. And I'll try to set up like uh, uh, do it in two ways. So I'll first like show how we construct. And the second uh, was like uh, what made us uh, to construct in that. So uh, so for construction, we need few things. I'll uh, put those in this, uh, this slide in the next slide. Uh, just bear with me, just as uh, a simple objects and we'll construct a uh, conform block off of it. So uh, we need this uh, lock related Gaussian field on the interval zero one, and uh, the, the, it would be sort of characterized by its covariance function. So its covariance function is just like two times minus two times logarithm of this e power i pi x minus e power i pi y. So essentially this difference would be sine of uh, pi times x minus y. So what sort of would come out from here is that yx at a point has like infinite, infinite variance. So it lives in the space of distribution like as in my Gaussian free field. And so one of the sort of like uh, sort of uh, useful way to sort of uh, write down yx is this through like this infinite series. Again, like in Gaussian free field, we have like a basis expansion and this coefficients of this uh, expansion are ideally Gaussian. So if you want to work with this uh, Y field, uh, one way to sort of do it, as I was doing like saying for Gaussian free field, is that truncate this Y field, uh, like truncate this part, like this infinite series, and prove something with that, and take the limit as uh, in this field. So we need this Y field, and um, uh, out of it, we'll sort of build another thing, which would be specific for this, uh, uh, Torus and for other geometry, one needs like uh, some other kind of decoration uh, on the top of Y field. Uh, so the we need like uh, this this particular decoration of Y field. So we define Y tau field but again, like it's a lock correlated or Gaussian field, uh, and its covariance is given by slightly compl complicated than the Y field. Now we have minus two times logarithm of theta of x minus y plus some constant ignore this constant for now. So, and one way to sort of like uh, remember how this Y tau field would look like is that Y tau field has a decomposition that y, y tau equals to Y plus a smooth Gaussian field. And so for most of the practical purpose, like the smoothness of F field comes as very handy. Um, okay, so uh, I, these are the, like objects that I needed for the Y and the F tau are independent. Yeah, so Y and F tau are independent. So that's another reason why um, this uh, F tau be used, like handling F tau would be used uh, very easy. Um, okay, so then uh, I want to, so again, like I uh, had to go through like this, uh, so I had to make this construction out of this Gaussian multiplicative chaos measure. And like, as in like in the previous case, uh, this Gaussian multiplicative chaos measure would be like 
uh, uh, like would have this random nicotine derivative to be e power this uh, gamma over two times y tau x. Uh, so to make sense of again like y tau lives in the space of distribution, I have to sort of like to make sense of it. I need to trick the finite truncation of y tau field, uh, renormalize it, and then take it, uh, send it to um, send n to infinity. And sort of like to make sense of the measure, we can like do it in this following way. We integrate this uh, finite truncation with respect to some test function and uh, take n to infinity. This convergence is guaranteed by Martin Gore convergence theorem. This is just big word Yeah, exactly. Now here comes the sort of this magical part. So uh, uh, this the conform block, it just uh, uh, has this simple expression like this. Uh, uh, so in this algebraic approach or any sort of like this uh, uh, definition of conformal block uh, coming from this work of uh, Guillermo Coupier and Rosen Vargas is an infinite series, but somehow we can put it in uh, like compress it to have this sort of like very simple sort of expression. So, so it's, sorry, is this the definition or what no, is it? No, it's not. It's our definition. Okay. So what I'm going to show is that it matches with. You know, this is your all definition. The, okay. All the other definitions. And, and this is this is for the just for the Taurus, I guess. Right? This for the just for the Taurus, and there will be talks by my colleagues uh, where they will show the expression for the sphere as well, and it is also for, 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 for like a four points for the sphere. I think like we can have probably n points for. Okay. okay, so uh, uh, so it's very simple. So it's an expected value of some uh, uh, power or some integral with respect to this uh, like uh, 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 Gaussian multi multiplicative chaos measure uh, integrated with respect to some test function, like uh, some specific function here. So that's just the, the theta is a, is, a, is a theta function, right? The theta is a theta function. Tau is this modular parameter. And you see there is an extra parameter p, and this p is called like internal momentum parameter. This is same, this is coming from this, let me just go back a little bit before. So in, uh, in, the, in the conformal bootstrap, <laughs> integral with respect to this p variable, and this p sits in, will sit inside the conformal block. So this is sort of often, often termed as like this um, internal momentum parameter. So what it parameterizes, it parameterizes the cut that you make like for gluing these two surfaces um, on a physical level. But for now, for us, it's just an extra parameter to sort of carry in the conformal block. Uh, okay, so then- uh, and, and the expectation, is that, is that the free field expectation? What free field expectation? expectation. Free field, that, that's the random. This, on, on, the, on the circle or on the sphere? This free field is defined on the interval zero. Circle, right? Circle, circle, circle. Yes, circle. Uh, yes. So, so that's, the, that's the free field expectation, which you wrote with the y's with alpha tau's. Exactly. OK. So uh, alpha, alpha is coming from this uh, weight of this mark point on the torus. Um, uh, we, uh, uh, the mark point here is the point zero. And uh, tau, as like, uh, this, this I introduced before, there is this uh, one uh, small thing I, uh, I have to mention here. This z is a normalizing constant. And it would be sort of like determined in a way so that this uh, my h uh, as q goes to 0 should have limit 1. And as p goes to infinity, should have limit 1. So this would uniquely sort of specify the z. OK, so now. <laughs> so now I'll try to find it out very, very briefly how this um, magic happens. Um, so what it turns out is that in the physics literature, for some specific value of the parameters, it seems like there's some proposal, uh, like very explicit, uh, very compressed proposal for this uh, expression of the conformal block. And uh, so for this choice of parameter, when minus alpha over gamma equals to some integer, positive integer, uh, uh, which is, has to be less than four over gamma square. Then uh, the uh, the conformal block uh, is uh, like uh, proposed to have this following Dossinger-Fatih type integral form. Now what we did is that we saw this 
And of course, it was not proven like a very too. So what uh, had been done before is that there was this proposal, and there had been little, like a lot of like simulations that are sort of numerical study to sort of match actually that the uh, whole block from the sparsity definition matches with this integral definition and matches with arbitrary order. So you have seen this, and what we realize is that you can for if we can generalize it for uh, um, like for any parameter, not just for when minus alpha over gamma is some integer. And this generalization exactly takes this particular shape. So, so your formula was kind of known in the integer case, but you want to be able to, but, but there are only some some finite number of integers, right, or something. So finite right? number of integers. Yeah. And, yeah, exactly, because there is a yeah. 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 I was so not. You want, to, you want to make sure that it, it's still valid for all, 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 all allowable parameters. Exactly, and also like this this thing, uh, like so far at least uh, the, the kind of like uh, 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 papers where we have seen this, they only did, I mean, at least for those papers, like they only did like some simulation study to sort of like match this, Sorry, like okay. some, some numerical study uh -huh. to match this, like that these two things matches at arbitrary order. Where in your expectation lies this, uh, like, Vandermont factor, this tip of tau x? Oh, this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that's a good question. So uh, let's I suppose I make it in, part part. Uh, make it in, then uh, you have, like, n many such integral. And what you have, what would happen is that this Vandermont type of would, uh, uh, term would come from, like, this interaction between different Gaussian, uh, this Gaussian field at different points. So there's a partial integration over the y that gives it. Oh, uh, like let's say you have like a two integral, uh, like this, yeah. this is equals yeah, two. This is equal then you have like a, this integral with respect to x one variable, this integral with respect to x two variable. Now this interaction term would sort of like between this exponential of y tau x one and exponential of y two x two. Expectation on that would take. So that's using the log correlated structure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so but then I will review, as I promised, I will review some of those previous definitions of the law. And so uh, this was probably like the, the uh, our most earlier uh, definition, which is coming from this Vera's uh, algebra. So uh, essentially, uh, and this is like this generator of the Vera's algebra. That's how this, there is this commutation relation. And uh, essentially, this conformal block is given by some uh, trees of some operators, and there's like some normal modules and parameter operators. Uh, but like it's as for, like so from like the physics perspective, they just they're um, you, you can uh, think of it as a sort of just a formal power series and its convergence of this power series was not known. Uh, like it was proved later by this uh, by Guillermo Rose uh Kupen and Rhodes and Vargas, uh, but uh, it was not known for a long time. Um, but from the practitioner's perspective, yeah, maybe go back, go back to that point. Can you say a little bit more about it? Yeah, so uh, so there is some uh, which are probably like uh, uh, I don't require as much in, in my talk that there is some uh, like this different uh, way to define this primary field, primary operators, uh, which is sort of like when we try to these formal modules and. Uh, and uh, we are kind of take, taking this uh, trace of this primary operator. It's, it's, it's like a character then, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then uh, from, if you really have to compute this uh, uh, conformal block, the what comes out to be very sort of useful is this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, approach of like geomological recursion. So it sort of like recursively defines, like uh, recursively determines all the coefficients of this power series, as I was saying. And it comes from this observation that like this conformal block as a function of this internal momentum parameter is a meromorphic function. And in particular, it would have like just a simple poles at some very specific values, PMN, just something like this. And in particular, the residue at the simple poles uh, is uh, given by, again, the conformal block at a different value of p, times some constant. So these are essentially the uh, 
uh, residue expansion of my profile block with respect to this p variable. Now, since we, we have this expansion, now you can apply again the same expression for this conformal block, and uh, you get another sort of like, uh, like iterated ex expansion here. And if you do this iteration several times, you'd be able to determine each of the coefficients of the power series very explicitly. For instance, like the first term of this power series would look something like this. This is a power series in Q? This is a power series. This would turn out to be a power series in Q, yes. My previous definition would also be a power series in Q. And this is this recursion is uh, giving us a way to determine each of the coefficients very explicitly. But Q is not a small parameter. Q is equal to be I by tau. Tau uh, seems to be taking like a uh, value in the upper half plane. The Q would be always bounded by, uh, actually value of Q would be bounded by one. And um, in most of the computation, we actually take tau to vary along the imaginary axis. So Q would be some, you can think of it as a real number taking value in between here. But because this is a power series in Q, then uh, it gives you the most information when Q is close to zero, I guess. Yes. Um, yes. So is that the special and interesting case that you would like to have in mind that Q is close to zero or is not so important? Uh, this normalizing constant, if you remember, right, was determined by the sort of like um, taking this limit Q to zero. And essentially, this normalizing constant is the sort of like this expression by taking setting q to zero. So uh, we have actually very explicit formula of this, uh, this, this expression uh, for q equal to zero, but, like in terms of some special function. But what would actually be very interesting is that to study what would happen when q goes to one, and this would be revealed by some sort of modular symmetry of the Hubble block, and I, I guess Jean or uh, Guillaume will be talking about this at some point of time. Is it so understanding what happens when Q goes to one? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, but it, it's sort of like uh, use the modular symmetry to understand mm -hmm. what this is. Yeah. So the modular symmetry will allow you to go from small Q to large? Small Q to large Q. Okay, so another thing that I wanted to point out before, uh, like I'm going to uh, the our main result. Uh, so this uh, there is another connection with this, uh, like this uh, gauge theory. So uh, which uh, uh, comes through this um, uh, correspondence, LD Tachikawa AGT correspondence. So what it says is that basically there is this Nicarasa partition function in this uh, gauge theory. And it's uh, up to some like explicit constant, it's supposed to coincide with the expression of the conform block, little uh, conform block. So this is the expression, this is the power series expression for this right hand side here, this is supposed to be the expression for this Nicarasa partition function. And this AGT sort of like um, says that this conform block that I presented in my previous slide has to be sort of um, same as this, or uh, like up to some constant has to be same as this Nicarasa operation function. Now, this correspondence for the torus case, uh, which showed by Patti and Lindelof, but then they didn't address these convergence issues at that point. Um, okay, so now this is our main result. So, what we were able to show is that, like, um, our expression of the conformal law, like this probabilistic expression, it coincides with this two other notion of the conformal block, one coming from this gauge theory through this AGT, and other is this uh, actual like this representation theoretic definition. Moreover, we were what we were able to show that this uh, uh, this conformal block, uh, this power series definition, would be convergent uh, for all Q, absolute value of Q less than C for some explicit uh, for some constant greater than one half. Uh, there, there, there is really a, a forthcoming work where we were able to extend this uh, um, constant to um, up to one. But uh, so this was the uh, so uh, a result, and what it sort of brings in is this like the uh, this desired analytic properties of the conformal block, which you can use to study like different kind of asymptotics. 
And one of such sort of application of um, sort of like talk about in my um, next slide here. So this is about like this uh, semi-classical limit. And um, so this, uh, there's some conjecture by made by Jamal Jikov uh, 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 made in this, like around this uh, semi-classical limit. And uh, so it was studied uh, by several people, especially like uh, there is a, a paper by Oleg Lisovi and I do uh, last year, where they were studying this, um, uh, this uh, geological conjecture for, in the case of sphere. Um, although they are using this more conventional representation theoretic definition of the conformal block, um, uh, I haven't gone to like too much details of the proof, but then uh, they were able to show like some version of the geological conjecture for a sphere. But here, what we are trying to do is, is like to address the similar problem for uh, the case of torus uh, with the help of this probabilistic idea. So, so this conjecture has two components. So the first one is that like this sort of limit exists. If you take logarithm of my conformal block, scale it by gamma square and send gamma to zero, then it should converge to some explicit thing. And moreover, this, this object uh, is related to what is called like this maze equation. So it supposedly should be some uh, uh, like derivative of this, this uh, limit, um, this derivative with respect to this tau parameter should be the something called this accessory parameters of like this Lemay's equation. So this is sort of like this, this construct the Lemay's equation. And it's like a, you can think of it as sort of, if, if this is a Lemay operator, it's a kind of like a giving an eigenvalue of the separator. Um, so what our results, so this is a work with uh, 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 Harini and Andrea, as we were saying before, what uh, we were able to show is that like this, um, uh, this uh, our probabilistic conformal block would satisfy this, uh, this two proposal of this uh, um, geological conjecture. Uh, so here, one thing to sort of like uh, 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 stress here, like how this different parameters of the conformal block are related to this different parameters uh, of this Lemay's equation. So Lemay's equation, the uniqueness would be guaranteed by fixing some monodromy uh, parameter or monodromy uh, information of the solution. A monodromy would be sort of like, if we go around like some arms of the torus, how the phase, how the solution would change. Um, uh, it would change by a phase and the space would be sort of like, sort of it gives the uniqueness. Uh, if you fix the phase, it would give some sort of uniqueness of the solution. Uh, so on the from the uh, uh, from the conformal block side, we have this alpha parameter, uh, this uh, which is said to be alpha naught over gamma. This alpha parameter would be sort of like crucial in determining this n parameter of the Lemay's equation. So this m actually would be uh, sort of fixing the monodromy of solution near the point zero for this Lemay's equation, and uh, this uh, uh, p and tau would be fixing monodromy like uh, what is called like a cycle and b cycle monodromy of this uh, uh, solution of the Lemay's equation. I'll not go into very much details about that, but uh, at least uh, this kind of identification has to be made to guarantee the uniqueness of the solution. Um, okay, so then I'll, I'll just uh, try to sort of like uh, mention some of the proof strategies and probably discuss a little bit about this tools uh, which were crucial for our proof. Uh, so our proof, uh, these tools uh, on the probabilistic side, which made uh, this uh, proofs work, uh, are, can be sort of like um, uh, uh, sort of, there are these three major tools that we have used. Uh, the first one is this BPZ differential equation. And um, so this would make connection with Pellevé equation, and that would bring in some sort of integrability in the uh, theory of this conform block. And there is this second thing, which is this operator product expansion. Um, so this is like if you think if BPC is a differential equation, you can think of this operator product expansion as giving some sort of boundary condition. And there is this other this uh, component, derivative GMC. Uh, this has mainly been used uh, for studying the semi-classical limit. This won't show up in this convergence result. So uh, the steps of the proof will can categorize into like uh, three step. 
uh, for both the uh, results. Uh, so this BPZ plus OPE is a differential equation plus boundary condition gives some shift equation for the compound block. So it so relates to a power block at some value parameter to some shifted value of parameter by some explicit relation. Now this AGT been like this, uh, like through this connection with the Necrosa partition function, we were able to show that this uh, uh, this representation theoretic uh, definition in the conform block would also match this same shift uh, equation that we got from this probabilistic side. And there is uh, the last step has to be uh, the uh, this uniqueness of the solution, which would show that these two definitions actually sort of are equal. On the semi-classical limit side, there is some like uh, 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 parallel uh, steps. Uh, this uh, BPZ plus this derivative GMC would uh, allow us to show that this convergence towards a uh, solution of Lemay's equation or make the connection with the Lemay's equation. And then uh, this OPE plus bootstrap has to be sort of used to match this boundary condition, more like monodromy information. And uh, the last step would be this uniqueness, proving this uniqueness. <laughs> Okay, so uh, how much time do I have? You have about uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, that's great, okay. Um, so uh, I mentioned about the three tools. I'll go a little bit of details about each of the three tools. Um, so how does this BPZ equation appears? And this is sort of like, uh, uh, would be used, uh, has been used uh, over and over again in our work and uh, in this forthcoming work that I was mentioning also. Uh, 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 this would be used to some extent. Uh, so this, uh, mm, uh, so uh, so we have in the CFT we have this correlation function of the compound block. So they can obey some differential equation, but then we have to do some sort of like uh, uh, deformation of this uh, of this objects. So we have to deform these objects by putting some like extra term inside this expression. You're gonna see like how we do it, do it in the next slide. And this extra term would be weighted by two specific parameters. And then on the, this, uh, they would satisfy this uh, differential equation. So this, this weight would be minus gamma over two or minus two over gamma. Then we study the solution space of BPZ equation. So this would be sort of like, we matched it to the sol like solution space of the hypergeometric equation. And then this would sort of like induce some non-trivial relations between like this um, uh, uh, this GMC expression of the compound block. And this OPE would be used to sort of like bring in this boundary condition and this would constrain the solution space. So altogether it's BPZ and OPE provide some sort of integrability of this um, GMC and through, through that would have like integrability of the compound block. Okay, so then how do we do this deformation? So uh, uh, I showed this uh, uh, probabilistic expression of the compound block to you. So if okay, we, are you gonna show us what these BPC equations are? I've seen them up there. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna show you. Yeah, they're gonna show yeah. And uh, it's, so, okay, so I'll tell you a comment about that. Um, okay, so, uh, uh, so I showed you this probabilistic definition of the compound block, but then, we're gonna make we're gonna make the, some deformation now inside it. So what we do is that very simple deformation. We won't change the randomness at all. We just change the test function with respect to which the, the this exponential of the free field being integrated. So we'll introduce an extra theta function with a new variable u, and put a sort of power onto it. This power would carry this guy variable. Uh, this is exactly sort of like uh, this. This would take like either of these two values, gamma or two or two over gamma. Uh, we have some constraint on this uh, value of u, but um, just to sort of make sense of this expectation, but essentially like one should be able to do it for any value of u. Uh, okay, so then we make this deformation. Now we go to this uh, uh, BPZ equation at least. Um, for the torus, this is how it looks like. So if you forget about this term, this is essentially Lemay's equation. This, this, uh, these two things together would construct Lemay's equation. Now, you keep, if you keep this, uh, this tau derivative here, along with this, this is called non-stationary Lemay's equation. And surprisingly, it appears in many different sort of contexts. For instance, um, 
uh, an eight vertex model, but Axler's Q operator also satisfy the same equation. And there, it, like this has been used to show some kind of, uh, young boxer equation uh, for this eight vertex model. Another uh, thing is this is uh, related to uh, quantum building basics by some simple change of variable. Some version of it also appears in the context of uh, um, this uh, uh, random matrix theory. So uh, in spike matrix model, um, uh, essentially like same equation appears up to some identification of the parameters. So uh, uh, since it has this connection with this quantum pellet basics, uh, uh, it sort of brings in naturally some integrability uh, along with it. And then we sort of like uh, combine that with this operator product expansion that we're saying. So what we do with, in this uh, OPE is that we send this U to zero, like U variable, that this deformation variable uh, to zero. And then um, we'll study how this like uh, uh, deformed conform block degenerates as you go to zero. It turns out it sort of like splits, splits into two terms, like two principal terms, and then uh, uh, this principal term would carry like this undeformed kind of compound block uh, along with some power, like two different powers of uh, this U variable. But it's just like the some sort of uh, expansion around U equals to zero. Of so is it, is it straightforward to show that this the side of uh, the base of the equation you wrote above, or is that is that difficult? It's uh, just like Gaussian integration by yeah, okay. so that's, that's But uh, it's clumsy, but I think uh, it's not that difficult. But you need this extra parameter. You know, you have yeah. it enters the deformation in order to have it satisfying this equation. Is that the right. idea? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, some sort of some cancellation would have magical cancellation would happen because of a particular choice of parameters. If we set it to be something else, it won't. There's some magic in it. Um, okay, so then other thing is this derivative Gaussian multiplicative chaos measure that I was saying. So essentially, what's it's like? It's uh, it's it just amounts to taking some derivative of our Gaussian multiplicative chaos measure with respect to this gamma variable, and 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 then do this integration. Um, uh, so, as I told before, uh, that th we need this to study the semi-classical limit. And what, what it turns out is the case is that one can show that the semi-classical limit, it just um, like a uh, difference of this two particular limit, where uh, essentially like this, let's say it's first, if you focus on this first limit, it's like gamma squared times logarithm of some exponential moment of this uh, derivative multiple. And so uh, to show that this limit indeed exists, one needs to study some sort of moderate deviation for this derivative merging. And that is indeed what we did. And that's sort of uh, to show this existence of the same classical limit, which is the first postulate of. Um, so in what sense is this a derivative? If you're taking a derivative in what? Or yeah, so it's like just like. So that's a, just the definition. I mean, but yeah, have you taken, yeah. a, def have you taken a def an actual derivative of the? Not really. Okay. It's just so like it's a a allegory, probably. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, but the term inside the integral is formally the derivative in gamma of what you have with the gems. Yeah, I guess some sort of derivative has been taken, but um, like, uh, but then since this gamma is like still sticking in here, I should not say actual derivative. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, so what I left to do now is that how do we connect uh, or how this uh, BPZ is bringing in this um, integrability and how do we connect with this Lemmy's equation, the semi-classical limit with the Lemmy's equation. And it's not very hard. Uh, so what it's like, uh, and, and just like this, shape of this VPZ, like the simpler shape of this VPZ allows us to do this, both these two jobs and this kind of like written here. So what it turns out is that if you look at this deformed conform block and I make a like a uh, like first expand it uh, as a power series of Q, 
instead of function of q, if we expand it to the power series of q and make a change of variable, then uh, like from u to like this w, it's really a simpler sort of change of variable. Then with respect to w variable, each of the coefficients of the power series, it satisfies some sort of hypergeometric equation. And then what we study is that like how the solution space of the hypergeometric equation would look like, although like there would be inhomogeneous, but still would not would be like, too difficult to sort of uh, study at the end. On the other hand, like this uh, connection to Lemay's equation also kind of like straightforward. So what it turns out in semi-classical limit, this deformed conformal block splits into two parts. So you can like, uh, it's not very hard to show that if the, there would be like the principal part would be the undeformed one. And there would be some like, uh, like um, uh, extra term. So this extra term, depending on what value of chi we choose, would be either error term or like would have some contribution. Now, let's say if it choose chi to be gamma over two, then uh, what it turns out is that like um, we can sort of apply, we know that chi satisfy B to Z. And you, like if you use this information, then we can derive some like um, a differential equation for W1. And this is exactly how it looks like. So this takes exactly the shape of like the Lemay's equation and this um, uh, cl semi-classical limit of this undeformed conformal block uh, kind of uh, very naturally sits in here. Uh, and which shows that indeed the semi-classical limit would be the accessory parameters of the Lemay's equations. Um, any question about that? Um, if not, um, let me just um, probably will uh, stop before um, the time. But uh, let me just uh, start start by saying some of this like a summary of what, uh, the talk and some of this upcoming upcoming works and future iterations, which would uh, come out of it. So we'll study this probabilistic conformal block and matches this pre uh, of this previous definition and uh, solves this convergence problem. Uh, and uh, also verified this geomology of conjecture, at least for the torus one point contour block. Uh, but uh, this, this uh, procedure that we did for the one point contour block can possibly be sort of um, carried out in other contexts as well, almost like in a, a similar way. And uh, so this upcoming work that I want to advertise here is that this approving this modular transformation properties of the contour block, which um, uh, uh, some of my colleagues will probably uh, present it later. So this would allow you, as I was uh, telling before, that to study this limit of the conformal block as Q goes to one, which would be very hard to do just from this power series definition. Um, uh, and then uh, this, uh, the, there would be like a few, on the future work direction side, like uh, this, this procedures or the, or the procedures in the our forthcoming paper could be used for studying the conformal blocks in other the geometry in hydrogen genus surface. Uh, another thing that would be useful to study, like in a, like a, uh, uh, so the, some part of it been studied by uh, uh, Guillermo Copian and Rhodes and, Rhodes and Vargas, the sewing of this little conformal block. So how we sort of like uh, take this conformal block for two different surface and see them at the construct of the block in this um, blue surface. So this, um, uh, using this probabilistic, similar probabilistic idea, this would be very interesting to study as a separate problem. Okay, I'll stop here and uh, thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you, Pramit. Uh, any questions? So it, for other geometries, you were, this is, I guess, for, special for the torus, right? Mm -hmm. But do you also other conjectured integral representations for the conformal blocks for, for yeah, other I geometries? Think, I think that should be, yeah, I think like, um, maybe like um, Guillaume or Jean would present, we can show some like prescribed or like conjectural expression. We probably would be able to show for now, at least for the sphere, but for other geometries, maybe there could be some expression for. So the, yeah, that'd be the four point function or the higher point functions for the yeah. sphere, yeah. I guess. Uh, uh, and then the other question I have is, is um, 
So what motivates these questions about the semi-classical limit of, of as q goes to zero or as q goes to one? So does that have some sort of natural implication for formal field theory or I don't know what? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think. So what, 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 what is the particular motivation for those? Um, for q goes to one, I think it's, um, I, I don't know those details very well, but then I think it's related to if you, so I, I mentioned that a conformal block is connected to this necrosynthetic function. Yeah. And then setting Q, like connecting this Q goes to one limit to Q goes to zero limit. This is kind of on the gaze theory side, this is related to this weak coupling, strong coupling duality. Mm -hmm. Um, so it has this motivation. So, but is it in, in the cross of partition function, is there a modular uh, duality too? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, so, so it's because a similar, the, you similar know, thing. Exactly. You could go from one to the other. So, right. 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 Uh, on the other hand, the semi classical limit, um, this is also uh, we need to sort of learn more that it's supposed to sort of describe some sort of this black hole. Uh, entropy, and, um, so maybe yeah. not just with the label for you, but we will couple with some more matter of your too. And so this has to do with uh, those kinds of questions. Those kinds of questions, right. yes. Yeah. I have a very basic question regarding the terminology. So you call these conformal blocks, right? <laughs> what are they a block of? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, that's a very intriguing question. <laughs> uh, to me, I guess I, I can say in my perspective that it would be very much wrong, but um, but I think that's why I put this picture here. Um, so to me, the conformal blocks are like the Legos. Um, so it's like this uh, glue, as I was saying, that mm -hmm. we have we have like two theories, um, two surfaces. It's a way to sort of like how you can combine these two theories and make a sort of a con consistent theory. Mm -hmm. So theory. I can think of those little pants pictures as being like like a three point function for the exactly for two point the, function for the <laughs> right. for the sphere, right? right sphere. And then you want to patch that <laughs> together and to do something on other other uh, surfaces. Other surfaces. Yeah. <laughs> so with this glowing interpretation, does that mean there's some? <laughs> <laughs> the flowing interpretation does that mean there's some relation with the like LQG SLE side with mating of trees? And... <laughs> you shouldn't have brought that. Okay. <laughs> well, you can say virtue of trees, yes. Okay. <laughs> can you say anything about the modular properties at this point? Yeah, I can. I can. <laughs> I, can the equation if you want. Um, I mean, we have like. Uh, yeah, I guess like uh, like if you ask me to write down some equation, so this is how it look like. So you have a conform block um, uh, at this, uh, alpha uh, gamma p, and uh, this is q is related to this modular parameter, e power i by tau. Then uh, this should be related to the conform block at um, uh, uh, this. Uh, 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 what when uh, you replace q by q tilde, but the definition of q tilde is e power i by over tau. And the relation is like you take this and then um, maybe take this, and this would be integral of this d prime. With respect to some integrated with respect to some something called modular kernel, and um, so it takes this shape. So now, suppose you're studying this. If you want to study this conformal block at q as q goes to one, mm -hmm. so uh, if you know this relation, it's equivalent to studying the conformal block at q tilde goes to zero. Because like when q goes to uh, one, q tilde would go to zero, okay. and this is called the modular equation. And, uh, this would give this modular loop structure over the space of conformal block. Okay. Um, 
But the, this you already know, right? This we are proving to be proving. <laughs> Do you have an explicit expression for this kernel ML? Yeah. Okay. If no other questions, let's uh, thank Promit again for an excellent talk.